Hi, I'm John Johnson, and this is my Kimberly Camper trailer. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of what this is. Now, I don't sell trailers. I have a trailer, so I'm more than happy to show you what I've got. The owner of this trailer describes the kitchen as not only the best in the industry, but he challenges you to find a better one out there. So let's get right into it, and as usual, stick around as I'll be sharing the three things I like about this trailer and the three things I think can be improved. Let's start up at the end. We've got the DO35 off-road hitch. It's the 360 articulating hit from Cruise Masters. Let's just go off-road. You've got the heavy-duty ARC 750 jockey wheel, which is strong enough that you can actually roll it around without worrying about breaking it. One of the advantages on the Kimberly is when you bring it up, it actually stores on the tongue, um, and you don't have to store it someplace, which I, some adventure trailers and one I had before, you had to take it off and then go store it someplace. Then it's got electric to hydraulic to disc brakes. And that's unusual in uh, most trailers. Most trailers only have um, electric drum brakes. So I don't think I understand the concept. Yeah, so it's electric to hydraulic. Okay, yeah. And then the hydraulic works the, the disc brakes. Gotcha. No cars have drum brakes anymore because disc brakes are better. The Kimberly Camper comes with a 90 watt solar panel, which is really cool if you are parked out and you want to keep your batteries topped off but quite honestly if you're like me when I go camping the first thing I need to do is go find a is find trees so I try to find the shade which makes it kind of useless to keep it charged up so we use portable um, solar panels you can charge it up off the solar you've got an Anderson connector you can hook it to your vehicle or you can charge it 110 off of your house power on a 15 amp plug you've got storage here storage here this is also where your air compressor is for your suspension so when you when you first land you you balance front to back with your jockey wheel and then you go side to side with your air suspension the advantage is you don't have to dig a hole or stack rocks very very simple to set up and get level and we've got the aeropod um, that you, I normally keep my canvases and my chairs in here then walking around here you see we have two full-size propane tanks, which by the way is more propane than you'll ever use, but I use that one to cook with and I've got a fire pit that I use on this one for a gas fire pit. Then on this side, we've got more storage. Your diesel for your diesel hot water and your diesel heat, and then your Webasco, which is the, 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 the heaters. You also got your DC to DC. And then this is where your water input is. So you put your water in here, and then this is where your shower comes out and your shower valve for your shower. This is a, a bike rack that goes on the back, swings around. So you can, a place to put a bike rack or insert like that. So again, for some of the off-road capabilities, comes with 33s, you can put 35s on it. Um, this has steel wheels, you can get aluminum wheels, trailing AR suspension, and no axle. So it's very capable to be able to get off. I tell folks, probably most places you're willing to drive to, you can pick, take this trailer too. Looking at the kitchen, arguably, now that, granted this is my trailer so I'm a little biased, this is the best kitchen on the market of any adventure trailer. I, I, I kind of challenge folks sometimes that if you can find a better one, show it to me because I'd like to see it. Start with, we've got three burners, high speed burner, walk burner, two regular burners, and then a broiler griddle, a bro broiler piece here. You've got pantry storage for pots, pans, foods, dry, dry goods up here. Then you go to a 95 liter, up to 95 liter, refrigerator freezer, which is bigger than most trailers. Then you have your prep area. So the prep area is wide, so you can work. It's solid, so you can do it. You've got storage, for you've got your flat goods storage for your utensils, your knives and things. Storage here, more storage here. But the nice thing is it's a good use. So you're cooking, you're prepping, you have your sink, hot and cold water, do your work here. Then we have on this side, it's a pull out table. Pull out table, I use for one of three things. If I'm cooking for a crowd, a lot of times I will set out the buffet here. So I'm cooking over there. People over here can serve themselves. We eat at it because if you've got an upright chair, 
You can sit at it comfortably, or a lot of times I'll actually set up here and use it as my desk. So it's very comfortable to work at. We've got power. So the, the trailer has a 2000 watt inverter. So we have 110. This is the input for um, if you've got shore power and then you've got um, portalet outlets everywhere. And I just put, use this portalet. This is my USB so I can keep everything charged. You can see that we've got the safari roof and the safari roof is nice because there's an air gap and what that does is keep the heat out of the trailer. And so if you feel the inside of the roof now with the sun out and then come out and feel the canopy, you can see, feel a significant difference of how hot it is. So that really helps with that. And then we've got the opening here for air. You can also put, I don't have it on here, but you can put a, a kid's room on here that's big enough for a queen's bed or two cots or two bunk beds. So you can actually sleep eight people in the trailer if you get it fully configured. And then I talked about that the 90, 90 um, watt um, solar panel on the front really wasn't very effective. So what we use are the portable solar panels and then we just go chase the sun where we need to. And these are extremely effective. So this is the inside of the trailer folded out. The first thing most people notice is how tall it is. Now I'm five foot 10 ish and I can't reach the top. So that's, you know, I haven't met anybody who's tall enough. Maybe Shaq showed up, he, he won't. So it's very tall, so it's a lot of room. So you've got a queen size bed with a real inner spring mattress. It's very comfortable. Up at the head, you've got LED lights and a power port. LED lights across the top. Then you've got your 2000 watt inverter here. And then this is your Webasco tent heater. And how does this do? Is it a three season camper, four season um, camper? I call this a three and a half season camper. It, it, it will go down to 20 degrees, but not for 20 degrees for a week. And so, I mean, I've camped in it down at 20. The heater keeps, keeps a pretty good job, but it is warming up in the 40s during the day. I would not, I, I hunt, I'm not gonna take it up in the mountains and you know, 13,000 feet and 18 inches of snow. It's not really what it's designed for. Folds out, as you see here in the changing room, it's a hard floor. And that's the, so you're not standing on canvas. And if you notice, you're four inches off the ground. If you're like me, I invariably find a campsite that when it rains, water runs through. So the advantage is the water runs underneath it. So from looking in here, I talked about that you can add a kid's room. This is where the kid's room goes. So this opens up and you attach the kid's room. One of the advantages is you can actually drop the canvas and have some privacy. The kids can have, or another couple can have some privacy and you and the bed can have some privacy. So not totally on top of each other. Okay, so then we have the ensuite, fancy word for shower. And so you see it's four by four. Good news is it's big enough so it's not claustrophobic, but it's not so open so it's voyeuristic. So plenty of room. So we have, we showed you the shower. The shower comes out into here. Um, because you have the Webasco hot water, it's, it's for, very instant on and endless as long as you have water. Well, you have 50 gallons on, on board, but if you have access to city water, you can pass through and run it through the city water. Or if you're next to a stream and there's water you don't mind showering in, you can actually pull water straight, straight out of the stream and use that to shower with and save your tank water for drinking and cooking and, and the like. Can you go back in there again so I can see the sure. size of that shower? Because it's big. So you can see here, so it's a big shower. So if you've ever taken a shower in a pop-up shower tent, it's tight. So you see here, this is four by four and high. So it's plenty of room to, to clean. Um, young um, couple was in earlier and the lady made a comment because she had a, a small child. She says, I can shower my baby in here, my child, with plenty of room. So it's, it was, it's good for the family for that. Um, the other advantage, and one of the things we found with my wife, is she's able to step out of the shower into the changing room and get dressed. Versus if you're in a pop-up shower, you take your shower, put the towel on, and then kind of do the floor show back to the tent. We talked about this is Australian made. It's all Australian canvas, very heavy duty. If you go on the websites and look and see, you'll see people that have these trailers that are 15, 20 years old that are still using the same original canvas. What we have here on top is the quick awning. Now the quick awning, I've got it set up as a rectangle. 
You can also set it up by taking the corner and attaching to here and make it a bat wing. So you can have a bat wing awning. You can also add on a Bedouin awning. It attaches here, comes out about a foot, and then you've got four fingers that come down and gives you more shade. And then you can also add a room kit, wall kit, that will totally enclose this area and, and close it in. Now that is, they've got um, plastic windows and Miji mesh, so you can put it up and let it down and still get wind through it, um, or you can totally close it up and make it fairly weatherproof. Here are the three things I really like about this trailer. Once set up, the layout and usability of this trailer may be the most innovative and practical I've ever seen. It feels just like camping we all knew as kids, but it lives more like a home. Giant covered outdoor kitchen, huge communal covered outdoor area that can be configured in many different ways. Stepping inside, you have this spacious mudroom that awaits to shed your dirty clothes, and no more awkward wet walks back inside after showering. And an extra layer of separation from the ground from unwanted guests. You know my wife May, she would be so thankful to be three inches above the creepy crawlies. The next thing I like is that with a 15 foot road footprint, the trailer tows and stores easily, but it expands to an impressive 22 foot trailer at the campsite, which accommodates up to eight people comfortably. I really like that the trailer enables users to draw accessible, renewable stream water into the shower. This conserves the water in your camper's onboard tank for other camping purposes, maximizing your water resources. Three things I dislike. The base weight of 2,531 pounds is pretty impressive for how large this trailer lives and for how robust the components are that they installed. This will work for most people, but still a little on the high side for my taste. However, while the dry weight may not eliminate mid-sized towing vehicles from being an option, the tongue weight might. With a tongue weight of 530 pounds dry, you're going to struggle to find a mid-size SUV that can handle this type of weight. However, I still think the overall weight and tongue weight is quite impressive for how much living space you get. You just would need to have a slightly bigger tow vehicle than our family prefers to use. The next two things I don't like is in regards to accessibility. One downside of this trailer is the inability to quickly access interior gear without popping up the camper. I'm having this same struggle now with Pueblo, my family's pop-up camper. The other issue with this camper is in regards to preparing a meal in inclement weather. Without setting everything up, you are limited to outdoor gear access only and open-aired meal prep. But these are all things many of us would be willing to sacrifice. There is no perfect trailer, I am aware of that, but these guys did a great job of getting pretty close. If you wanna see more trailers like this, check out the Air Opus here on the left, or below it, I have another video of a pop-up trailer that has standing height. As usual, make sure you check out our playlist of all the walkthroughs we have and stay safe on the road. We'll see you in the next episode.